Hello and welcome to the Dead Air Dudes. I'm Izzy and I'm back again solo, but this time I'm giving you guys a recap and review comments, polls, and opinions of the Netflix show Vikings Valhalla. Now, it's a follow-up to the original Viking show, which is on the History Channel. And basically, it is a show that is historical, inaccurate, but also fictionalized account of the Vikings. And this time it's a hundred years approximately after the exploits of Ragnar Lothbrok and his sons. And this seems to be taking place more with Leif, Leif Erikson and his family amongst others. That being said, so let's get on with it with a quick recap. I'm not going to go in depth to bore you guys, not to mention if you're interested, you should watch it, you know, so uh, it's going to give you a quick, uh, first you have the Greenlanders coming from Greenland, we have Leif Erikson, you have his, you have his sister, Freydis, you have, um, and I, think, I do believe there's another four other uh I guess their friends came also with them from Greenland, all right? Now, they come from Greenland to Kattegat to exact revenge for Freydis. Now, Freydis is Leif's, Leif's sister, and she's a badass in her own right, but she was raped when younger by a Christian Viking. Okay, so they're there. To basic to exact revenge for her, all right. Now, coincidentally, while this is happening, you have a reunion or you have a, a gathering of many Viking warriors called upon by King Canute at this time because of the Saint Bryce massacre. The Saint Bryce massacre was basically when all the Vikings that were living in England were killed for being there all in one time, all in one shot, okay? It had been so many years that the around the Dane law that the Vikings were settled there and they were living amongst them to the point where a lot of them became Christian. All the ones that were not, well, actually all the ones, they were all massacred. While this is going on, uh, Harold... Sigerson, uh, who is a descendant of Harold Finehair, if you guys remember from the first series, he is a Christian Viking, all right? Another one of the lead characters. He leaves just as the massacre is happening, so he survives, all right? Now, you have the Greenlanders who came to Kattegat at the same time. What is going on? So coincidentally, coincidence, that Freydis and Leif see the Christian Viking who happened to rape Freydis years ago. I mean, what are the odds, right? Well, I mean, considering all the Vikings are there assembled and they're assembled there by King Canute, like I mentioned before, because they plan on exacting revenge for all for the St. Bryce Massacre. They're going to go back to England, cut off the king's head, and basically take back what was theirs. You know? All right. Now, while this is going on, you have other characters like Olaf Har Haraldson, who happens to be um, Harold Sigurdsson, his stepbrother, who is also a Christian Viking, and the one who is close to the Christian Viking who happened to rape Freydis. All right, all while this is going on, you have uh, Arl Estrid Hakon, who was the leader of Kattegat, who a lot of people have been reading having an issue because she happens to be a black Viking, a female black Viking at that. I had no issues with it. The history doesn't, you know, that didn't happen, but I had no issues with it. She was perfectly fine. 
right, as well as the leader of the, sh uh, the Shield Maidens, Altora, who also happened to be black as well. Now, one issue I did have was the difference between the, the characters from the first series to this series, how they made the Shield Maidens this, this time around, or the female characters, way more powerful than in the first, which I don't have an issue, but if you're going to keep it that way, keep it consistent for both series. That's all. You had the great warrior uh, Lagertha who struggled to defeat, you know, guys that are bigger than her. And she was arguably one of the greatest shield maidens of all time. And you have lesser characters here taking on two, three, four, five guys at one time and dispatching them with relative ease. Okay, as you can imagine, Freitas gets revenge, kills the guy. Uh, Olaf flips out, wants her dead because she's a pagan, and she follows the 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 old laws. So, of course, Harold, who happened to be sleeping with Freydis, says, "You know what? There's a deal." They saw how Leif Erikson fought, who happens to be the son of the great berserker Eric the Red. He's a beast at fighting and is a great warrior. So they say, you know what? We'll save your sister's life if you come with us to England to exact revenge. And boom. He agrees. She agrees. Leif goes off to England. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay? You can just imagine what happens there. Now... When you get the all the England parts, you have Queen Emma, who's from Normandy, who is the descendant of Rollo, who is smart and slick and behind the scenes. While you have Godwin, who happens to be a really bad little finger clone from Game of Thrones. Nowhere near as snarky, nowhere near as smart, nowhere near as likable. Well, even though Glyphring wasn't like him, but he's the guy you love to hate. This guy you're just not a fan of. So, you have that backstabbing, backbiting stuff that they're trying to take from Game of Thrones. Doesn't work. The dialogue isn't that great. It's pretty preposterous at times. You have this huge religious uh, battle in the middle, which it was huge in the first series, but this is like... You have the Christians and you have the pagans and they keep harping upon that, that everything is, is based upon that. And then you have, during the second half of the season, you have this huge um, issue with uh, Jarl or Earl Kerr or Carr, who is a religious zealot, crazy man, berserker, Christian Viking who wants to kill all the pagans, including Freitas, and take over Kattegut. You could imagine what happens towards the end. You enter into a huge battle towards the end where many people die and ridiculousness ensues. All in all, the series is not bad. You see, the beginning of it is okay and it kind of lulls in the middle to a grand finale. Would I watch a second season? Probably because you end in a cliffhanger and you want to see where the characters go. Freydis is no Lagatha, and Leif Erikson is no Ragnar. Ragnar and the actor had a an inner struggle, constant inner struggle, where he seemed like a peaceful guy who only wanted to become a farmer, but ended up becoming this great warrior and the, the poster child for the series and the whole Viking Thing in general, at least according to, to the series. Well, Leaf, even though it's early, doesn't seem that way. He kind of seems a little aloof, a little emo, so to speak, and is not the same type of character. So, you know, Freitas seems to be a little more in depth of a character, but still not the biggest fan. You have the other ancillary characters who Eh, you could take them and leave them. I'm not going to go in depth into all that because there's like probably 20, 30 characters that have at least 
significant roles within thing, within this. Uh, obviously, it's 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 historically inaccurate, but you know, you take that with a grain of salt and you nod and you say, okay, give me something interesting to watch. Eh, it's okay. Two out of five, nowhere near as good as the first series. Is it watchable? Yes. Am I going to watch second season? Probably. And then I'll keep my options open to see what happens after that. That's pretty much it. Let us let me know or let us know what you guys think. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, save the whales. <laughs>